With this one, just like the Ice Queen Masquerade mask, we're going to be using a glue gun and glue sticks, and you're probably going to need about three or four glue sticks to do the whole mask. We're going to be doing this in a slightly similar way to the way we did the Ice Queen Masquerade, but instead of having icicles, we're going to do more flame shapes. And you want to do the larger ones first, then move on to the medium shaped flames, and then lastly, do the smaller flames, but overlay that over the previous shapes. Now to be fair, you don't necessarily need to do it in this step. You could just draw the flames all in one go, but it makes it a lot more interesting once you paint it if you do it in layers. Once you've done all the different layers, we're going to go back to the parts around the eyes and kind of change it a little bit because it's a bit boring just having one swipe around the eye. So we're going to retexture it a little bit. And what you're going to do is just do blobs of glue and then kind of lift it and move on so that it creates a little bit of a kind of stippled rough texture and it looks really interesting once you paint it later on. Once the mask is cooled down, you're just going to peel it off and you can use a stick or a craft knife or even a spoon if you don't have anything like that and it's quite flexible so you really can put it through quite a bit of abuse. Once you've taken it off the cast you want to spray paint it black and I've done two coats of this and you want to wait for it to dry and then once it's dry we're going to be painting with three different colours yellow, orange and black and we're going to start with the orange. The good thing about this mask is you don't really have to be that neat you can be quite messy with it the main thing is just to really apply a lot of colour very close to the eyes and then slowly make a gradient the further out you go you don't want to go all the way to the edges of the mask, but maybe about halfway. For the orange to really stand out later, we're going to need to apply two coats. And once you've waited for the second coat to dry, we're going to move on to the yellow. With the yellow nail varnish, we're going to apply it a lot more lightly, except for around the edges of the eyes, where we're going to apply it quite heavily, but the further up you go, you want to more lightly brush it over the mask instead of trying to really get it into all the nooks and crannies. Once you've applied the yellow, just wait for it to dry a little bit and then we're going to go back to the orange and reapply it. And this is the part where the mask really starts to look pretty awesome because you get all these colours playing against each other and it looks really beautiful. For the last nail varnish, we're just going to keep this to the very edge of the mask and what you want to do with this is lightly load your brush and then really loosely run it over the edges. This way it will catch the high points of the mask and this is why it was so important to create all those different layers earlier because it looks so much more interesting once you paint it. Now you could just leave it at this but I like to add rhinestones to my mask red masks. So I'm going to be using clear nail varnish to stick them down and I'm using mainly three different colours. For the yellow I'm going to keep this close to the edges and the red and the orange rhinestones I'm going to keep close to the eyes. If you apply rhinestones you're really going to have to apply quite a few of them for it to be noticed and this part is going to take a while. It could take you about an hour to get this whole thing done but once you've finished it looks pretty awesome. And that's it. You're done.